attention all personnel and everybody else who might be listening in. It's Loretta Smith here, and I want to remind you that you are listening to the Retro TV Trivia Podcast with Pat McCormack. And me too, sometimes. Greetings, fellow Classic TV fans, and welcome to Retro TV Trivia. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. On today's podcast, we'll be joined by one of the finest entertainers of the 20th century. George Chikiris has been a star of stage and screen for decades. His Oscar and Golden Globe winning performance in West Side Story, among many other classic film appearances, has earned him an iconic status. We talk about West Side Story and his enjoyably surprising evening at the 34th Academy Awards with his lifelong friend, co-star, and co-winner, Rita Moreno. We also touch on his time in classic television and his most recent works, which include his autobiography entitled My West Side Story, a memoir. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the legendary, multi-talent, multi-award winning George Chikiris. Hello, George. Hi. Hi there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's an honor having you join us, and I appreciate it very much. Okay, thank you so much. Gosh. You know, as an Oscar and Golden Globe winner, among many other awards, your career really kind of speaks for itself, but let's talk about it anyway. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) You know, when I and many of your fans think of you, or at least I should say when I think of you, this image comes into my mind of your left leg sticking perfectly straight out. Oh, God, yes, that that picture, yeah, that makes great sense to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it's so iconic. I mean, yeah, yeah. when you see it, you know exactly what, what you're seeing, and, and you don't even yeah. have to say what the title of it is, but yeah. most people know West Side Story. Yes, sure, yeah. Well, it, I, yeah, it's interesting how uh, an image can, you know, take on a life of its own, and you know, and that one has, and it's, it's it, you know, thanks to Jerome Robbins, basically. <laughs> yeah, what a choreographer! Well, yeah, yes. I I was wondering. Now that's that's just a millisecond out of a tremendous dance routine. I, I was wondering, did it? cross your mind that maybe one millisecond of this routine will be captured and used thousands and thousands of times to identify this film? God, of course, I never thought anything like that when we were actually working. You just uh, concentrate on on the work. And of course, working for Jerry, you really concentrate on, on, on the work. And that's that was basically the task. You never stop thinking the furthest thing from your mind is anything like what we just mentioned, you know, not not that at all. Right. I would I would assume it would have been, it would have been a tough still pose. <laughs> <laughs> a still pose, yes. <laughs> In the middle of the routine, it was probably quite easy. But I was just wondering, could it have crossed your mind while you were doing that? And of course, so many seconds from that film could be used in that same way, but you know, it was you and the and the other fellas, and I thought that's that's just so great. Yeah, and the other fellas, by the way, are Eddie Verso, and I always like to give give that put their names out because they were part of that picture, that photograph as well. Um, Eddie Verso, and oh boy, that's I'm ashamed of myself that right now that other name. Well, was I should name. know. I should know too. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Jay Norman. That's there we go. Jay Norman. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. We got them covered. Well. You and Rita were a triple threat in that you're incredible actors, singers, and obviously dancers. Yeah. And, you know, of course, in the golden era of Hollywood, you've heard it said, Right. You got to do all three, you know. Yes, you're absolutely right. Because so, when, when we think of, um, you know, musical people in film, and, and, and of course, the really iconic ones like, Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly and, you know, Gene Nelson and so on, uh, they were triple threats, absolutely. And uh, never thought of being that. Just, I I guess I was, forgive me if I sound like I'm uh, tooting my own horn, but I, I, I was lucky in the sense that <clears throat> I loved uh, dancing and had a natural uh, sense of movement. Uh, but I also had a, a pretty nice voice, so it, it allowed me to be a triple threat, you know. Yeah. 
Which did you feel was your strongest attribute? Oh, well, I'll say what. When I think I, I had a, uh, I'll say a kind of brief recording career because of the way it was managed. But but uh, I loved singing as much as I loved dancing. Music, you know, yeah. uh, recording studios, orchestras, and that uh, was I, I loved recording so so very much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, so that's it. You. you it's funny. It's like, well, so you are considering yourself a singer who acts and dances, or a, uh-huh. or a singer who dances and acts, or first wow. and foremost, well, you know. <laughs> well, the, the, you know, I uh, again, I realized I, I don't think I've ever thought about it before, but talking to you right now, uh, I I realized that my uh, love of uh, of singing, well, I think, was every bit as strong as my love for dance. So I, I'm hard. I have a hard. Uh, time separating those two and say one was more than the other because i think they both had an equal kind of strength uh, in my mind yeah well obviously <laughs> an equal strength yeah. that equal strength yeah. won you an oscar i mean for yeah. pride, that's amazing well it, it's funny how things happen uh all of us no matter what we're doing in in our lives professionally and pro- uh we have to get lucky. And, uh, you know, when you think of West Side Story, all of us connected with West Side Story, no matter what we did. Basically, we were very lucky to be part of it, whether it was in the theater first, which I did, and then, of course, on the film. So uh, circumstance uh, g- gave us that blessing, and we were very lucky to be part of it, you know. Right. Well, and you obviously thought you were lucky just to be nominated for the Academy Award. You and Rita, right? Yeah, yeah. May I read it? Yes, yeah. But we, we were lucky. And, um, you know, I remember that night like it was yesterday because uh, Rita and I, you know, were great friends and we've, we've uh, remained friends over the years. It's like oh. no time has passed. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Robert, Robert Wise, uh, the, one of the co-directors of the film, uh, said uh, after the film was over, it was the first time in, in his career, and he had a quite a, uh, you know, amazing career in many, many different films. But his personal experience, was it was the first time that he remained uh, friendly with the cast uh, long after the film was over. So there was there's something, I, I can't quite define it, but there's something quite special about uh, West Side Story and the talents behind it. Jerry Robbins, uh, Robert Wise, uh, Leonard Bernstein, Stephen Zahn. I mean, that was such an extraordinary group of men who created this piece. And it just uh, I, I think I think it's also extraordinary in their individual lives and careers as well. West Side Story always stands out in front uh, somehow. Well, and for good reason. I mean, <laughs> you definitely deserved that award. With, with a cast like that, I mean, it's like, well, just give one to everybody. But <laughs> <laughs> I think you and you and Rita really did deserve it. But you didn't think so. I, I say that because I watched your acceptance speech. I blinked. And it was over. <laughs> and it was, yeah, right. I think what it is, was, hers was just as quick as also both of us were the really quick. Yeah. Is it true? I, I, I read this that they are recorded as the shortest Oscar acceptance speeches ever. I think I've heard Rita say. I think I think it's. Uh, I think that's correct. Uh, I'm, there probably are others if we looked at you know history and and, and search, did a research, but Rita's and my speeches were. Very, very, I think, beautifully short. Uh, when I think back of, to that time and having them be short, as opposed to what we had no criticism intended, now people have long speeches and they thank, you know, so many. And so uh, ours, by comparison, are very short, yeah. Yeah, they didn't have to start the music with you guys. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> they probably thought, wait, we need to fill more time. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Hope. Give us a give us a monologue. I Oh wow, Bob Hope. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's just that's so great that you guys both you went together, you won together, and neither of you expected. Yeah, it it, it was a obviously it was a just an incredible evening because because of the way it all transpired and and you know we, as you say we went together and we got lucky together and we've been friends ever since you know and we were friends before as well you know but, but yeah it, the, the bond is just unbreakable you know yeah well, oh that's that's wonderful you shared that experience and you get to enjoy each other for a lifetime yeah. how wonderful yes yeah exactly yeah so 
I know that you have a new book. Well, it's... I, oh, gosh, yeah. I didn't see how new it is, but I know it's available. Matter of fact, I put my order in. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. It's My West Side Story, a memoir. Right. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, the, the book has been out for a year or something like that now. Uh, and because it's, you know, that far already behind me, I've... I've almost forgotten that it was that it's there, but uh, but I had uh, I wrote with a wonderful uh, writer called Lindsay Harrison, and she's she also did Tippy Hedman's book. Uh, just coincidentally, Tippy is a friend, so we all know each other. But but Lindsay's a wonderful writer, and she was uh, just a tremendous help in, in in forming this book. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to crack the cover on that. I I'm so into autobiographies these days, and that one. I'm with you. I, I love autobiographies. Yeah, because it's, it's a life. It's about people. It's nice. It's true. And how interesting can it... <laughs> well, it can't get more interesting than somebody who had been involved in something that is an American historical event. I mean, that's really what motion pictures are. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you're, you're part of history. And, um, you know, speaking of history, <laughs> I also saw that, was it last month, two months back in September, you celebrated a birthday at the Hollywood Museum? I, I did. A, a big birthday. <laughs> yeah, no, I was saying, Rita beat me to that particular birthday by nine months. She's just nine months older than I am. So, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the Hollywood Museum is such a, it's such a, a great, a great place. Uh, I, you know, it was the Max Factor building. They don't call it that anymore. It's now the Hollywood Museum. Right. But it, it, that that museum itself has a tremendous, tremendous history. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't wait to see it. Um, you know, it was it was interesting looking at you. You were being interviewed, and I thought, God, he looks so good. I'm thinking, <laughs> either you have the fountain of youth in your backyard, because, or as you said. I don't ever celebrate birthdays. <laughs> you, uh, you know, I I I never have. I, I, I it's not that I tried to. I just never thought of it. it just wasn't important to me. But but this one, uh, uh, you know, because it was done at the Hollywood Museum, uh, they made an evening of it. It was very very nice. Um, so it was a a, a, a nice. A nice birthday. <laughs> there it is, too. And a lesson in longevity, folks, from George Chakiris. Um, Don't ce celebrate your birthday until you hit 90, and then you're in there. <laughs> right. And nobody will believe it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what I think of, because sometimes people do comment uh, about uh, people not exactly looking their age, you know. Uh, and to me, I think the, uh, uh, a kind of explanation for that is dancers. Dancers, uh, every dancer I've ever known, or even that I haven't known, uh, because of the way that career, using your body that way and staying in that kind of shape, is it's a tremendous help in, I guess, just in being healthy, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think Dick Van Dyke would agree with you. <laughs> oh, my God, yes, yeah, yeah. So do you still have a routine that includes dancing, or, or are you on some other sort of, because I, I heard you say it's exercise, baby. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't go to dance class anymore. I, I have my own routine. I go to the gym. Uh, the thing that's difficult, not difficult, but uh, dancing is it, it takes up your time in a whole different way. If you have a class at 1 o'clock or at 11 o'clock, something like that, you have to get ready for it. Then you have to warm up before you do the class. Then you do the class. And so it takes up a good part of the day. Mm -hmm. And it, it, in, in, in this time of my life, I prefer ha have using my time a little differently and a little, a little more uh, sensibly. So I've, uh, I go to the gym and I can go to the gym at any time of the day that I want. So it's really much more convenient. But at the same time, I'm still getting the exercise. Yeah. Well, how often do you do it per week? I'm just curious. A minimum of three times. I try for five, or a minimum of five. But I'm, I'm successful with three and sometimes five. Yeah. See, there it is, folks. That longevity thing. No birthdays and the gym for <laughs> three to five times a week. Got it? That That's funny, yes. <laughs> it's just true, and it's just so yeah. obvious. There's no miracle <laughs> miracle drug or pill out there that's going to make you. And you got to do the work, right? Yeah, that's, uh, you're absolutely right. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And you did. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I... 
I look back at your career and I'm like, okay, all right. I, you know, I know George. I loved West Side Story ever since I was a yeah. kid. And then I'm like, yeah. Yeah. wait a minute. You were one of those guys with Marilyn on Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend? What? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and by the way, one of the things that I, one of the nicest times of my life was working as a chorus dancer in some of those class movie musicals that was such such a ball, uh, you know, uh, White Christmas, uh, Bigger Dune, and of course, of course, the gentleman for blood, and working with with great choreographers and all the dancers around as well, and great stars. Yeah. Uh, and now Mar- Marilyn, of course, the, I mean, the the beat goes on; it'll never stop with her. And so, uh, who knew that that would be the case then? But uh, again, it was just. It was so thrilling, such a pleasure to be just a dancer in one of those movies. It was great, great fun. So I'll take it that that was a positive experience working with Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, because uh, working on it, you just, uh, as the dancers, we try to please the choreographer, and do, uh, what, uh, what he's choreographed for, for the dancers to do. Uh, so you, I never paid any attention to anything else. Um, on, but once it was over, uh, I, you know, then once something is over, you can start re- reflect back on the experience. And sometimes people will ask me, and and I I would have the same curiosity. They'll ask about her, and the thing that I I noticed uh, in in that movie, particularly in *Gentlemen for Blondes*, was how concentrated she was on her work. She didn't. Uh, she she was very quiet. And uh, whenever they called cut for any reason, she didn't go to her dressing room, she didn't look in the mirror, she went right back to her starting position to start again. She was just as concentrated, if not more so, than, than the dancers. And I, I, always, I always noted that about her. Wow, that's, that's wonderful. That's what you want to hear, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what she cared about, the work. That's what she cared about. That was what would matter to her. Right. And, of course, it, show, it shows. You know. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, the 60s were a whirlwind for you. I mean, holy smokes, all those films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The 60s was a good, a good decade. It was. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it was. And, you know, at the same time, I call this podcast Retro TV Trivia, um, but it's, believe me, I'm having a great time talking about the classic movies, but with that, because I'm a fan, but classic television as well. I like to keep the memories alive. And you had a, quite a stint as I look at your, your, your record here, um, starring on Medical Center, of course. Oh, right, right, yes. And then appearing on Hawaii Five-0, Dallas, Murder, She Wrote. Yeah. And, and, and it was, it's those shows were really wonderful, big part of as well. By the way, Medical Center, uh, the the director. I did three episodes of that, and the director right now, his name is Space Me. He had been he had directed uh, at Warner Brothers. He had directed a, a couple of Betty Davis films. So it was really interesting how people's careers move move around. And uh, but, but I can't remember his name right now. But the point is, in television, you got to work with some really wonderful people who had been. been directing film before they did television so it was it, it was a great working experience and and um, god dallas was such a great show it was so incredibly organized yeah uh, every every that crew everybody loved doing that show because it was so well organized anyway television was great fun because you know you were really doing the same thing but a different format right yeah and i'll probably get some hate mail from people going you forgot he was on wonder woman pat Oh, gosh, Wonder Woman. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> oh, well, let me be. I'm happy to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Be- beautiful Linda Carter. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Still beautiful. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. She also obviously doesn't celebrate birthdays and goes to the gym three to five times a week. Okay. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and she's a singer as well. She sings. Yeah. 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 It's multi-talent, and and that's what I said in the beginning, and it's true. I mean, you're an artist uh, in so many aspects, and I I was looking on your website, and I got to tell you, that jewelry line that you have is over-the-top good. God, thank you. Thank you so much for that. It's something I really love uh, doing. And uh, jewelry is, is, is basically, uh, to me, in the same ballpark as, as performing. Because basically what you do is 
uh, you, you, you're you doing the jewelry for an audience. You hope people will like what you present and, and maybe even buy it. But, but the, And it's the same in the theater and film. You basically, uh, you're working for an audience and you hope that you will please that audience and that they will like what we're all trying to do. Yeah. Same with jewelry. Same with jewelry. You just hope that they, somebody will like one of those pieces. And so if the connection is, is very similar. Yeah. Well, I looked. I looked at it, and I like most of those pieces, <laughs> if not all of them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's great stuff, and I love how you have it categorized. And thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank. I appreciate that. I really do because I love doing it. You know. Well, yeah. I'm going to put the link up to your website, of course, and you know, folks can do some maybe some quick holiday shopping if I can get this pod- <laughs> podcast it's out. It's Christmas time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and otherwise birthdays. Don't buy one from for for George because he doesn't celebrate birthdays. We've, we've established <laughs> that. That's it. Yep. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> yeah, gosh. Wow. That's just great that you have so many facets to be able to express yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, that's a good, uh, good word because uh, uh, singing, dancing, acting are forms of expression, but so is making, so is jewelry. It's a, 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 just a different form of expression. But expression is the right, is the good word. There's all kinds of incredible jewelry out there, of course. Yeah. At your height, what was the fan mail like for you? Well, listen, that was all a surprise to me, and I didn't really get it or understand it. But uh, the fan mail for me started actually with White Christmas. Uh, and then because of that, I was carried out signing me to a contract. But but when uh, with West Side Story, yeah, the fan mail was uh, was quite tremendous for at that studio, and, and it, it, it fell into my lap a bit as well. But it was, listen, West Side Story was so tremendously successful worldwide for all of us that the fan mail must have been wow you know but uh, it, it was there yeah and i understand of course that you you used to walk down hollywood boulevard to go to dance school i used to do the same thing to go to music school oh oh my god yes how, well isn't isn't that a nice memory isn't it great i never dreamed that i would actually have the opportunity I love hearing you say that. I never dream because that is that's what happens when things are happening. You, you never dream that they are that they might develop into something more and more meaningful for you and, and into a dream. It's nice when some of those dreams come true in some way. Well, and obviously it did because you, you sir, are immortalized with the greatest in front of the Chinese theater. Yeah, gosh, yeah. And what a legacy. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. I, yeah, I, well, thanks, uh, thanks to the primarily to to West Side Story, uh, because uh, yeah, it, it was it was such a tremendous piece in the theater, and of course, eventually uh, the film. And the thing about film, of course, it, it reaches a, a worldwide audience as opposed to theater, which where the audience is limited in size. Uh, so, but film, because it's a film, and because it reaches so many people, and it, and it is such a meaningful piece, uh, you so the 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 attention to some degree uh, kind of never stops because the film is always there. Uh, right. So I'm just I'm just rambling on now. Sorry about that. No, I love it. You know, folks, if you get a chance and you're in Hollywood, you got to go there and look for George. He's in very good company. I might add. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Yeah. Oh, just when you say memories, because I I, rem- I I remember as if it was last night when I would I was uh, taking class here at the American School of Dance on Hollywood Boulevard, and I have a scholarship so I had to clean the studio at night all by myself and close it, clean the mirrors and all of that stuff, and then lock up. And I would walk down Hollywood Boulevard to a, a room I was working in a rooming house, and I passed Grobbins Chinese Theater every night and i had it all to myself there was no one there not like it is now it's packed you know but in those days i had that robert chinese theater and those footprints and everything to myself and it was just dreamy i can't you know i'm sure you know what i mean oh that yeah just, yeah maybe that's the trick you know I, yeah <laughs> i just walk by walk in front of man's theater uh, multiple times and you're sure to be a star <laughs> or at least be <laughs> <meet> one <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I lived on Orange, which was, you know, that that's the cross yeah. street right there. Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow, you live in Orange, yes. Yeah, yeah. and so I, it was right there, right behind the Roosevelt. And um, 
You yeah, know? The, the school, the dance school was literally just a block away from what you're talking about. I think it was on, near Sycamore, oh, and yeah. they were very close. Yeah. Right, right. Um, the school I was at was the Musicians in- Institute, which is still there. Oh, and, wow. And it was on McCadden, I believe. That's the cross street Okay. There. Okay. Yeah, McCadden near, near Las Palmas, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little, a little further, but uh, still close. Yeah. I didn't mind. I didn't mind. Not one bit. It was, again. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's so interesting to me. When, when you're that young, it's, it's, nothing is too difficult. Nothing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've proved that. You have, sir. Yeah. And um, your longevity is so admirable. And uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Gus. Uh, I'm so glad you're, you're uh, still out there pushing it. And, you know, yeah. again, it just goes to show... You take care of yourself, and that's this is what you know. This is what you can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take you. I did. Uh, I think that being a dancer automatically made me take care of myself. But I, I, I've always, I guess, without trying, have taken care of myself. It's just part of what I did, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Y- your body was the was the product. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. And you had the looks too, and just like, what else? What else do you need? Oh, I can sing. <laughs> yeah. God, I, I have such, just talking to you makes me, real, and do, doing the book as well, maybe reminded me of how lucky I've been, how many incredible people I've gotten to work with. And I mean, I've had, I've had so much fun. Oh. Yeah, so much fun. Yeah. So I wonder, folks, would you think it was luck beating out Montgomery Clift, Peter Falk, Jackie Gleason, George C. Oh. Scott for an Oscar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, that's, uh, that's uh, obviously that's a biggie, you know, because those those guys, I mean, uh, but I think the thing that, the only thing that was pretty, well, uh, that was in my favor was the tremendous success of West Side Story. Just that, uh, uh, what, uh, what I think, was helped make, make that kind of difference. Because, I mean, George C. Scott, McCubb, I mean, two of my favorite actors, all of them, you know. Uh, but uh, the success of West Side Story was just so so tremendous that uh, we all got to ride it on that wave, you know. Yeah. When I saw that, I thought, no wonder he didn't think he was going to win. Look at this competition. <laughs> Holy smokes. Uh, yeah. And, and, and in those days, I was much too naive to even consider the competition. I, didn't, I never thought about it. I didn't know, you know. <laughs> Let alone write an acceptance speech. Who needs one? Thanks, everybody. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> Which is perfect, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, George, it has been so great talking to you. And again, thank you so much for, for joining me on my show. It's, it's truly an honor. Thank you so much for giving you a beautiful start to my day. Thank you so much. My pleasure, sir. So I will let you get on with your day. Okay, thank you. Have a great day yourself, and thank you so much. Thank you, George. There you have it, another retro TV trivia in the books. Be sure to check out georgechikiris.com and order his book, My West Side Story. Also, browse the George Chikiris collection of fine jewelry. Both would make a great gift idea. You'll find the link, as well as some career highlight video links, in my description. Believe me, those are worth watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast and leave me a positive rating and review. You'll also see links to all of my social media accounts, and I would, of course, appreciate your follows there. I'm your host, Pat McCormack, from the Golden Rage of TV, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Trivia.